contains essential trace elements. We hear that phrase frequently in reef aquarium products ranging from chemical additives to the brains of salt we use. So what are trace elements exactly, and what role do they play in our reefs? First off, let's take a look at the composition of salt water. Salt water with a specific gravity of 1.025 is made up of 96.5% water, H2O, and then sea salts that make up the remaining 3.5%. It's crazy when you think of it that the difference between this life-sustaining liquid that we need in order to survive is only 3.5% away from a liquid that would drive us insane and kill us if we were to drink it over the next couple of days. But I digress. That 3.5% salt is made up of major elements and trace elements. The major elements are sodium, chloride, sulfate, magnesium, potassium, and calcium. In past videos, I've talked a bit about some of these major elements, like calcium and magnesium, so be sure to check those out. Okay, so after accounting for the major elements, what's left is a whopping 0.7%, 0.7 of that 3.5%. Those are the trace elements. There's around 70 different trace elements and they all fit into that tiny little percentage. The 14 most abundant are chromium, cobalt, copper, fluorine, iodine, iron, manganese, molybdenum, nickel, phosphorus, selenium, tin, vanadium, and zinc. From this illustration, you may be thinking that these elements are barely there. They're practically insignificant. No, 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 no. These trace elements are vitally important to all sorts of biological processes that happen in our aquariums. In fact, too little or too much of any of them could cause some serious problems. Don't believe me? Imagine what an abundance of copper will do in your reef. My goal with this video is to urge people to pay closer attention to these trace elements. This is especially true if you want to start dosing your aquarium with them. If you've been around this hobby enough, I'm sure you would have heard an anecdote from somebody about dosing some particular trace element to improve something. Okay, so a couple of examples off the top of my head are dosing iodine for xenia or dosing strontium for better health in stony corals. I don't know if these solutions work or not, and that's really not my point. My point is, if you plan on adding trace elements, make sure that you're testing for them, especially considering the vanishingly small quantities that they represent in our salt water. Here you can see a selection of the test kits that we carry on advancedreefaquarium.com. It's a pretty extensive selection, but there are definitely other trace elements that are not possible to test for. If you want to get really crazy, you can send water samples to a professional lab to get them analyzed. One such company that does that is Triton Reef. Their system ignites the water and characterizes the sample through both liquid chromatography and spectroscopy. The output is arguably as accurate a profile of trace elements as there is. The elements in blue are what's being tested for. Okay, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new about trace elements in our reef tanks. Take care everyone.